Due to present-day medical science, miracles of surgery are performed throughout the world with every tick of the clock. Many major operations that in former years would have been considered death sentences are now, well, just something to chat about while convalescing. The modern equipment that produces anesthesia under the hand of a specialist makes this possible. Gaseous fumes expertly mixed with oxygen bring painless sleep to the patient. Formerly, a quantity of pure gas administered as an anesthetic caused sickness. Now, the mixture of gas with oxygen generally prevents sickness and makes the procedure easier on the lungs and heart. As the patient breathes through the tube, his senses dim. The anesthetic, if blown directly into the lungs, would rupture respiratory cells. Hence, the bellows act as an elastic reservoir from which the lungs inhale only as much anesthetic as they can naturally handle. As far back as 3000 BC, a crude form of anesthesia was practiced by Egyptian doctors for many operations. A wooden bowl on the head of the panic-stricken patient was half the equipment. The other half, yow, a mallet of all things. Oh, doctor. And then they operated, really. In 1750, the English surgeon was called a chirurgeon. He also frequently functioned as the village dentist and barber. And if he operated the way he cut hair, well, look. In those days, the barber surgeon made it a practice to dry his bandages by winding them around a red pole in front of his shop. Thus originated the modern barber pole. Well, Shorty, what'll it be? Hmm, a leg off or a love potion at the same price. But all this gent wanted was a tooth removed. Nervous? Yes, indeed. Who wouldn't be? But then, in those days, too, they had a painkiller for petulant patients. Not a gas anesthetic like our modern dentist, but it wasn't bad. It often became necessary for the dentist, just by way of soothing his patient, of course, to thus prove that the anesthetic was quite harmless. Oh, quite. <clears throat> and so, in time, the uninitiated would finally be induced to taste the concoction. Then a pleasurable reaction, followed by intense interest in the anesthetic. Ardent spirits. Hmm, alcohol. Odds bodkins, what a way to become insensible to pain. In fact, what a way to become insensible. A more serious page in the story of anesthetics took place in England in 1799 when Humphrey Davy, a senior medical student, made a strange discovery. At this time, nitrous oxide had no therapeutic use. From its fumes, the boys acquired a hilarious jag. They called it laughing gas. Davy, extremely annoyed by the conduct of the younger students, was determined to put a stop to these parties. What was this? The lad had shown no sign of pain. Again, a blow had no effect and thus was discovered the first gaseous anesthetic for major operations. And in time, Davy was to be knighted by the king. The discovery stirred the entire medical world, but impurities and poor equipment often caused heart failure. Today, pure nitrous oxide properly administered is highly successful, but the laughing gas of this period was condemned. Hello. It looks like we're back in 1750 again. Yep, and that patient requires a lot more liquid anesthetic before he'll have that tooth out. Nice work, old thing, old fruit, old stuff. But to resume, in 1839, when P.A. Wilhite was a medical student, a safe anesthetic was still being sought. Ether, a cleaning fluid, was just another chemical byproduct. Students at Anderson, South Carolina also used it, as the English boys had used nitrous oxide years before. 
The appearance of a houseboy inspired a prank that was to prove an important factor in the scientific structure of modern anesthesia. What seemed to the students merely a practical joke was to Will Height a lesson he'd never forget. The reaction of the boy startled them. Later, after efforts to revive the lad had failed, Will Height feared that the prank of his schoolmates was to end in tragedy. And so, sobered by what they'd seen, the frightened students awaited the end. In those days, a Negro was chattel. The boy's death would not be homicide, but the students would stand trial for felonious destruction of property. But look at the corpse. Gracious, he's come to life. Hallelujah. Feet, get going. And so, tense nerves relaxed in shrieks of laughter. But young Will Height was too deeply impressed to see the humor of the situation. Following graduation, Dr. Will Height went to work in Jackson County, Georgia, as assistant to Dr. Crawford Long. Here he overheard a discussion between Dr. Long and James Venable, a patient. The doctor knew that only the knife could save Venable's life, but the patient, fearful, refused to submit to this operation. Will Height had just been cleaning a chemical retort with ether. Now there flashed through his mind a series of pictures of a previous experience with this chemical. He related to Dr. Long the story of the colored boy, and this incident inspired Long and Will Height to try and save Venable's life through the first use of ether as a general anesthetic. Calmly, Will Height reminded Dr. Long that failure would mean disgrace for them both. If their theory proved fatal to their patient, their efforts would be considered murder. Their careers would end in the penitentiary, but they decided to take the chance. And so, unbeknown to Venable, and contrary to his will, the doctors prepared to take the drastic step. Here, another dangerous adventure by medical pioneers, such as the many that glorify this great profession. The ether quickly did its work, and soon the historic scene was set. Again, the realization that they were facing a penitentiary offense. But come, on with it. Here was a life to be saved. With only the crude and limited facilities of the period at his disposal, Dr. Long put his skill and courage to the test. As the minutes flew by, Dr. Long worked feverishly. Up to now, surgery such as this had been impossible. Perhaps this, too, would prove fatal. The first surgical feat of its kind finished, and the patient threw it all, unconscious to any pain. And so, with Venable's happy convalescence, the beginning of a new, brilliant chapter in the history of medical science was written. The first bill for a general anesthetic that saved a life was for the staggering sum of two bucks. And according to the records, did that bill burn him up? Today, the skill and equipment of the anesthetist makes it possible for great doctors to perform wonders in the complete restoration of facial beauty. Through anesthesia, the clever surgeon is able to apply magic fingers to vital tasks such as giving light to eyes that once knew only darkness, and such as bringing smiles to little cheeks once faded. And speaking of smiles, what's happened to our dentist then? Well, here's the big yank of the year 1750. At last, a tooth is to be pulled. But hey, it's the wrong tooth. In fact, it's the wrong man. Goodbye. <laughs>